I'm Dan from Advanced Rehab Technologies, specialist in lymphedema compression pump equipment. My company has done over 6,800 patients with the compression therapy equipment to treat lymphedema, venous ulcers, stasis dermatitis, and all sorts of lymphedemas and swelling caused by cancer, etc. Today I'm going to show the basics of how to do a lymphedema pump because there's a lot of particulars you need to know when you're doing this to do it safely. First off, when we're going to do a lymphedema pump, you always want to have the patient here sitting in a comfortable spot where they can sit for an hour uninterrupted because that's a typical treatment time. Placing the pump on something nice and solid is also important. We typically move away from things like TV trays because you don't want the equipment falling over and getting broken. Also, an outlet to plug into is important because we do not want the cord draped across a floor where it creates a tripping hazard for members of the family. Now, now my patient is ready to go. We're gonna start by getting her prepared for the pump. Got a pillowcase here, and what we're going to do here is to put this on her leg so that there's a barrier between her and the boot. We're going to put this up here like this. You can fold the excess over. This is important because a lot of patients we see have issues with breakdown of the skin, small ulcerations, lesions, and the boot has a tendency to get dirty if you're putting it on bare skin. The last thing you want to do is pop that boot on top of a leg with an open lesion and the boot is dirty because then you get cross-contamination where you might just get an infection like cellulitis from your body's own waste material from your, your leg. So we got our boot here. We're gonna unzip. And we're gonna slide this on the leg. And she is gonna pull up using the black straps on the side because we do never wanna yank on the hoses. We want the heel here inside the boot. You don't wanna necessarily see the toes popping up because we don't wanna push the edema the other way. Now she's got it on, you can let go, and away we go. Now, when I see somebody with lymphedema for the first time, I generally recommend four things for them to do. Because while the pump is great, it is not the only answer to your problem. We find that a multifaceted approach works better for lymphedema than just leaning on one particular therapy. So when I see patients, I recommend four things. Number one, of course, being the pump. Normally, we start people out about an hour per session. Why an hour per session, you ask? Well, I like to say we spent years of research, millions of dollars trying to find out the most optimum time, and what we discovered was most TV programs last one hour. So what you do is you say, hey, my show's coming on. Boom, you throw the boot on, hit the button. When your show's over, wait for the deflation cycle, and you're done. That way, it really didn't take a lot of time out of your day. So initially twice a day, morning and evening saves a good time, but the nice thing about the therapy is that the times are very flexible. You can move them around as you need to fit your lifestyle. You got doctor's appointments, no need to panic, just simply move the treatment session to a later time in the day, simple as that. So you wanna to try to do this initially two one hour sessions per day, and it is better to do two separate sessions than jamming the two hours into one big block. So number one on my list, lymphedema pump. Second thing is elevation. You want to try to elevate the legs. Now here in the chair, it's good and it's important to have the leg up. Lying in bed is also important. We definitely recommend that you when you're in bed that your leg is elevated. Now I'm not a big fan of pillows because they tend to smush down. You turn over in bed a few times. Now instead of your leg being up, the pillow's down to your knee and now your knee's like this, making it worse. So I recommend elevating the foot of the bed up. You can do this with a simple piece of wood, like a block of a two by four, laid flat, literally only an inch and three quarters up, or a red brick. Put it under the foot of the bed so now your bed's up like that. So instead of your bed being perfectly horizontal, you now went to that. Notice I said this, not this. You don't need concrete blocks, railroad ties. Nobody wants you going to bed getting a headache or acid reflux. Just a couple inches to get the legs a little higher than the heart so gravity will pull the edema out of the leg while you sleep. So that's important. Thing number three, compression stockings. People typically benefit from compression stockings. Now here's the thing. 
no doctors that I know of want you compressing on top of a compression stocking with a pump. So the best thing to do is to pick a treatment time first thing in the morning. Run the boot for an hour. When you're done, it deflates, you hit the button, take it off. Then get your compression stocking and pull it on then. Reason is that the pump here does a wonderful job at bringing the leg down. It will make the legs smaller and help increase that circulation and push the edema out. But when you take the boot off, there is a tendency for the leg to want to balloon back out again over the course of hours. So, compression stockings don't do a good job of bringing a big leg down, but they do do a good job of holding that downsized leg in. So you pump, push some edema out, make the legs smaller. Then when you take the boot off, you immediately pull the stocking up and that holds the leg in check and keeps it from expanding out all day long. Then for your nighttime session, take the stocking off an hour or two before bed, go back into the pump and boot, pump for an hour, and then you're ready for bed. That is thing number three that we suggest you do. Finally, thing number four, exercise. Two reasons for this. Number one, you have in your leg what's called a calf muscle pump here. As you walk, it's flexing, it's helping to push the blood and edema out of your legs and keeps your muscles toned, and that's important. Sitting in a chair, lying in bed, absolutely nothing's happening there with that muscle and it's not doing anything for you. Second big reason is here, and this is more of a personal reason. My company, we service everything we do here. And I get calls every month from people saying, Dan, my pump isn't working. And I'm like, okay. No problem, I've got time this week, I'll pop out and see you, we'll see what we can do to fix it for you and make it better. They all say, that's great, Dan. Oh, one thing though, I'm not at home anymore. And I'm like, okay, where do I find you then? And they're like, I'm at the skilled nursing facility up the highway. And I'm like, ah, that explains why the pump is not working because when I go see them in the facility, they typically whisper in my ear saying, the staff dropped it on the floor and has now broken it. And I get to have a fun conversation with management about who's going to pay for the repairs. A lot of the people, when I ask them how do they like it in the facility, and 100% of my patients tell me, Dan, it stinks here. I hate it. I want to go home. But they can't because they're typically in the facility because they've fallen down and broken a hip or an arm or a leg or anything else. So what's the key to not going to a facility? Getting up and moving your behind light exercise. No one's suggesting you're training for a marathon here, but we want a light exercise, simple walking. Keep the leg muscles toned. The stronger they are, the less likely you are to trip and fall down and hit the floor and break something. And that way you get to stay at home and stay healthier. So we absolutely positively recommend exercise. Now, like I said, no one's suggesting you're training for a, a marathon here, but just general walking, Light leg exercises is good enough for a lot of people and it definitely helps keep your leg in good shape. So those are the four things we recommend. The pump, elevation, compression stockings, and exercise. You do all four together, you're gonna to get a much better result for your legs than you would if you're just leaning on one thing alone. So that's it for segment one. Thanks and have a great day.